Hey guys, it's been a long time since we have looked at DC to DC converters. Earlier we have seen the design of buck converter, a boost converter, flyback converter, push pull converter and a sepic converter. This time we are going to check about the forward converter. It's working, disadvantages and advantages. So buckle up guys, let's go for a ride. The topology of the forward converter is slightly different than a flyback converter. The forward converter consists of a MOSFET, two diodes, a transformer, inductor and an output capacitor. The construction of the forward converter is like this. There is a very important difference between flyback converter and a forward converter. In the flyback converter, when the current is flowing through the primary of the transformer, then there is no current in the secondary side. Here it is exactly opposite. The primary and secondary current flow simultaneously through both primary and secondary coils. That's why the name of this converter is the forward converter. These diodes act like freewheeling diodes. A DC voltage is applied to the input of the converter. So let's say it's working. We'll divide the working of this converter into two modes. First when the MOSFET Q1 is turned on and second when the MOSFET is turned off. In the first mode when the MOSFET is turned on the current starts flowing through the primary and due to electromagnetic induction the current in the secondary winding flows in this direction. So D1 gets forward biased and the voltage between primary and secondary is related to turns ratio that is primary voltage upon secondary voltage is equal to primary number of turns upon secondary number of turns. So diode D1 provides the current to the output filter L1 and C1. So this filter removes the ripple and provides DC voltage to the load. At this point the load voltage is given by this formula. Now in this second mode of operation, the current in the primary and secondary winding falls to zero but due to sudden change in the current and stored energy in the inductor L1, according to the formula V is equal to LDI by DT, the flyback voltage induces in the inductor and the polarity of current gets reversed. So the diode D2 gets forward biased and it provides the power to the output even if the primary side of the transformer is off. So this process repeats every time. The switching of the MOSFET is dependent on the pulse width modulation and the duty cycle of the switching is given by on time upon off time of the MOSFET. The output voltage of the forward converter is given as duty cycle into number of secondary turns upon number of primary turns into input voltage. So the output voltage of the forward converter is directly proportional to the duty cycle. But we have considered the ideal transformer where the transformer's primary and secondary turns don't store any energy and current in both of these windings falls to zero as soon as the MOSFET Q1 turns off. But in real world, these windings act as inductors. When Q1 is turned off in second mode of operation, the current is interrupted. So according to this equation, when the current changes in a short period of time, the voltage across inductor induces. This process repeats after every cycle time. And in few cycles, the transformer will saturate. This voltage is so much and if you see the circuit diagram, it will get added in the input voltage and the voltage across drain and source of the MOSFET increases immensely which will eventually break down the MOSFET. Well to avoid this we have to reset the transformer after every cycle where this trapped energy in the transformer will exit and the voltage across the primary side of the transformer should be towards zero. For that we can add an extra tertiary winding and series diode like this. 
For simplicity of understanding, I'll connect the circuit in this fashion. As the polarity of stored magnetization energy of the primary winding is reversed, this will induce the voltage in the tertiary winding and this diode will get forward biased. Then current through the tertiary winding will start flowing. This winding is very closely coupled to the primary winding of the transformer. This is how the stored energy of the inductor is fed into the supply itself and resets the transformer. Even when the switch is turned on, the voltage will induce in the tertiary winding. But as the diode gets reverse biased, there will be no current flowing through this circuit. Let's see the working of this forward converter with tertiary winding by understanding the waveforms at each stage and component. This is the PWM given at the gate of the MOSFET. So when the gate pulse is high, MOSFET turns on and the voltage across MOSFET is zero. The voltage across primary winding increases up to VIN and current in the primary winding rises up to maximum current into number of secondary turns upon number of primary turns. The voltage across D3 is shown here. We'll name this quantity as minus VD3. Simultaneously, voltage across the secondary winding increases because of that, the current passing through the inductor L1 is also increasing. So the output voltage across the load is constant DC filtered by this LC filter. Now when the MOSFET is turned off, the voltage across the MOSFET rises due to stored energy in the primary winding. At this time, the diode D3 is forward biased and it starts conducting so the voltage across D3 is zero. The voltage across primary winding of the transformer will be like this. And as the switch is off, the current will be zero. On the secondary side, the stored energy in the L1 starts providing power to the load. So the current of L1 is decreasing, which keeps the output voltage constant. After some time, the transformer resets and voltage across MOSFET goes down up to input voltage. Now the polarity of the voltage is reversed. The voltage across D3 will be minus V in. Similarly, the voltage and current across primary winding of the transformer will be zero. The current of the inductor keeps decreasing in this phase as well, providing power to the output and voltage of the load is maintained constant. So there are three steps of working of a forward converter. And this process repeats every time to get the constant power at the output. There are many advantages of the forward converter over flyback converter. The transformer copper losses in the forward converter are lower as compared to same power flyback converter. Since the energy stored in the output inductor is available to the load directly, the value of the capacitor C1 is quite small because it is only reducing the output ripple. Peak current of the MOSFET will be lower than flyback converters. However, there is a big disadvantage of this converter which is the cost. The cost of the converter increases due to extra inductor and diodes. So that's it for now. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section. Hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel. And finally, thanks for watching.